professional photographers know, we're very good at filling hard drives with imagery that rarely gets used. Unused edits from previous photo shoots, stock images, it all adds up and you'll no doubt have a huge back catalogue of files gathering digital dust. This is a shame, and with the help of Affinity Photo 2, you can breathe new life into these overlooked frames. The secret lies in the expert blending feature offered by Affinity Photo 2, and the results can be absolutely stunning. Essentially, you're taking precise control of merging two files together to produce an abstract image that adds a real fine art feel to the frame. Working with layers and blending modes, this technique enables a high degree of control over how the two separate images come together. So let's get started. Open both your background and your donor image in Affinity Photo. Unless it's a RAW file, you'll find yourself in the Photo Persona. If you're not, just head to the top left of the interface and click on the Photo Persona icon. Our first job is to select the donor image. Press Command and A and this will select the whole frame and you'll know it's selected by the marching ants around the frame. Head to the top of the interface and click on edit and scroll down to copy. You can now get rid of this image by going to file and hitting close. Back at our background image, head up to edit once more and this time scroll down to paste. Now, it's highly likely that your image will need repositioning and resizing. So head to the toolbar and select the Move tool. And the keyboard shortcut for this is V. Once you click on this icon, a border will surround the layer. If you hold down Alt and pull on the corner handle, your image will resize proportionally. There we go. That looks about right for what I need. So I'm going to head back and click on the View tool, which is keyboard shortcut H. Our next job is to change the blending mode. Now make sure that the donor layer is selected in the layers panel and change the blending mode from normal to either soft light, overlay or average. And in this case, because of the tonal information in the image, average works best. You'll see the image has gone faint and the pixels in the background image are seeping through. But don't worry though, we'll strengthen this layer as we fine tune the technique. The next job is to head back to the Layers panel and find the Mask icon. It's down here at the bottom of the Layers panel and is identified by a circle within a square. Click on it, select Mask, and you'll see that the mask has been added to your donor layer. We need to remove some of the pixels on our donor layer. So we're going to head back to the toolbar and select the Paintbrush tool, and the keyboard shortcut for this is B. Make sure that the brush is set to black and has a hardness of 0%. You can change the size of the brush with the square bracket keys. And just brush away around your subject so that there's no hard edges at the sides and we'll leave the face of the subject on the frame. If you need to, you can zoom in to get a better look by pressing Command and Plus or Command and Minus. Now, as I said, our donor image has got a bit faint, but we can fix this now using the adjustment options from the layers panel. Head down to the bottom of the layers panel and you can see the adjustments icon, which is a half black, half white circle. Click on it and you'll see a drop down menu appear with a load of different options. The option we want to select first is HSL. So click on this and a dialog box will appear. However, don't do anything just yet. You will see at the moment, this adjustment is at the top, which means it will affect both our donor image layer and our background layer. What we need to do is click and hold on the thumbnail and drag it down to our donor image thumbnail. You'll then see it's joined this layer and will only affect our donor image. Head back to the dialog box and you'll see the saturation slider. Drag this down all the way to the left to rid this layer of any colour. This will help it fit in better with your background layer. We're going to repeat this step, so head back to the Layers panel, click on Adjustments, but this time find the Curves option. If you head to the histogram and draw out a rough S shape, you'll see already the strength of the donor image increases. We're going to repeat this step one last time, 
head to adjustments, but this time we're going to select a white balance. Now I'm just going to alter the color temperature of our donor layer by dragging the slider to the right and introducing a slight tinge of orange. It fits better with our background image and all those trees. So let's just take a moment and look at the difference the adjustments have made. That's how we started. And these are the difference the adjustments made, just making that layer look more natural. Now again, it's still a little too faint. So what I'm going to do is select the donor image layer and click Command and J. And already this strengthens the effect, but we don't want all of this shadow around here. So I'm going to change the opacity of this layer. I'm just going to head back and select the brush, make sure the mask is selected. And let's just brush out the areas that we don't want. And you can take your time just going between the masks using whatever size brush you need to until you get the effect that you want. So this is without duplicating the donor layer and this is with duplicating the donor layer. And let's just pump that opacity up a tiny bit now. There we go. All you need to do now is head up to File, scroll down to Export, and you can save the file in your chosen format, whether that be a JPEG, TIFF, or PSD. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy merging your images together, and I'll see you next time.